worship on this absolutely glorious Sunday. We know that some people across Ontario will be gathering in person to worship this morning, and I know there were those of you who were hoping we'd all be back together this week, but that won't be happening, at least until September. Obviously, the health of our people is our primary concern, but also the restrictions that would need to be in place to allow us to worship together would not make it a fun experience. So we'll be online over the summer months, as usual, and come August, we'll make some decisions about the future, depending, of course, upon the situation. We have decided, though, that even when we resume worshiping together here in the sanctuary, we will also continue with the online worship. So stay tuned for more information about that as well. We are also looking um, at better ways to include those who do not have email and internet um, so that they're able to enjoy our services as well. So we may be looking for volunteers to pick up hard copies of sermons and reflections to deliver. Our opening hymn this morning reminds us that at no point in time was the Church of Jesus Christ ever supposed to relax into complacency. Especially in this day and age, we need to constantly be seeking new ways to reach out to the world in which we move, live, and have our being. Our opening hymn number 601 in Voices United, The Church of Christ in Every Age. people to seek what it is you need for the living of your lives. Come seeking courage, strength, hope. Come to boldly ask the God for rich blessings in order that you might be well equipped to reach out to God's people, God's world, to spread the very love and grace offered to you. Let us pray. 
We come into your presence today as always, Holy One, seeking to find all that we need for the living of our days. We come to you broken, empty, in need of your grace, your wisdom, your power to be renewed and equipped for service in your name. Grant us your many gifts so that we will not be lethargic, but rather enthusiastic to serve you well. God's ultimate promise is that of new life. When we are spent, dried up, tired out, God renews our spirits that we might continue to serve him faithfully. Thanks be to God. In our gospel reading today, Jesus sends the disciples out, equipped and prepared for whatever the reception might be. Reading from Matthew chapters 9 and 10. Jesus went through all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them, because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. Then Jesus summoned his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First, Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother Andrew, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew the tax collector, James, son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus, Simon the Cananean, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles, and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news, the kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You received without payment, give without payment. Take no gold or silver or copper in your belts, no bag for your journey or two tunics or sandals or a staff, for laborers deserve their food. Whatever town or village you enter, find out who in it is worthy and stay there until you leave. As you enter the house, greet it and let your peace return to you. If anyone will not welcome you or listen to your words, shake off the dust from your feet as you leave that house or town. Through these words, God's voice is heard. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Gracious God, you call us to go out to go out into the world to sp spread your love and grace. But so often, oh God, we long to rest in the comfort of the familiar places in which we gather with others to worship you. Help us, oh God, not only to hear your word of challenge, but to follow it. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. I was um, a strange sort of child. In fact, I suppose I was a strange young person as well. 
Let me explain, and yes, I'm glad I've outgrown my strangeness. I loved church. As a child, I loved snuggling up close to my mother and listening to my father's voice. I don't remember ever being bored or restless. My memories are of how warm and safe I felt and folded by my parents' love. I loved singing the hymns. They became to me almost like favorite storybooks, ones I wanted to read, to sing over and over again. The familiar words and tunes made me feel like I was known by something beyond myself, as well as I knew and loved them. As a teenager, I just wanted to be in church. I formed an ecumenical youth group with friends. We met for Bible study. We formed a youth choir. We led worship anywhere we could convince a minister to trust us. There were no lapses in my devotion to the institution. I never wandered off to see where demons dwell, as that favorite hymn of ours says. Well, okay. Yes, there were some typical teenage Saturday evenings, but I always pulled myself together for Sunday morning. Even now, 37 years after I signed my life away to the United Church Pension Plan, which is the other thing you have to do besides pledging a certain degree of orthodoxy in order to become a minister, after all of those years, I still love church. Once worship is over, I spend my Sunday afternoons reading and thinking about the next week's worship. But it never occurred to me, really, until I was reflecting on this week's reading, that my love of church has been all about me. Oh, not that there haven't been challenges and rough spots. In retirement, I can tell you the one thing I will love most is weekends. You know, those things I've heard people have that start on Friday afternoon and end on Monday morning. I dream of weekends. But other than that, and a few other little challenges along the way, like people, you know, some people who sometimes, well, enough said, you know, there haven't been many of those anyway. But aside from a few little blips on the radar screen, church has been for me a deep fulfillment of my need for spiritual nourishment, for Christian companionship, and also an outlet for my creative spirit. It has been all about me. I think most of you can identify with my feelings about church. I've heard from some of you this week, as I mentioned, lamenting the fact that we didn't jump on the government's permission to worship together right away. It wasn't that you have any desire to be careless or to risk spreading infection, I know. You just miss the comfort that worship brings. You miss the communal singing. You miss seeing friends. You miss the laughter. You miss being in this beautiful sanctuary where so many family memories have been made. Worshiping together is such an experience of comfort and joy. But it really has taken me all of these 60-some years to rea realize that isn't what it's supposed to be about. Remember last week at the end of our Gospel reading from Matthew, Jesus didn't say, now go cozy up somewhere and hope that people will come and join you. He said, go into the world and make disciples not sit back and invite them in 
not make sure to build churches and fill them. Get out there and spread the word. Our gospel reading today is a reminder that being a faithful Christian is no easy task, and it isn't. I can tell you what happens when people find out what you do for a living at a dinner party. Everyone makes apologies for how much they're drinking or why they haven't been to church in 30 years. I thought I'd done a pretty good job of keeping a low profile in my neighborhood when I moved in, never putting my collar on until I got in the car to make sure nobody saw me. And then one day this sweet elderly woman from down the street remarked on how much she liked my new walkway and said, I must enjoy sitting on my front porch and, and praying or whatever it is you people do with your time. We're a different breed, for sure, aren't we? But not in the way most people think. In this day and age, with so much focus on the right wing of the Christian church, people make the mistake of thinking that those people speak for all of us. All the more reason why we we of a more liberal tradition based on God's love and grace need to have a voice and that voice needs to be identified not just with a social conscience but a social conscience that is rooted in faith in God revealed in Jesus Christ who wills that all live in security and peace and joy and fullness of life. As much as I am heartbroken, we will not all be gathering here in this sanctuary for worship until September. I think in some ways it's the best thing that could have happened to us, myself included. Because we are forced to redefine who we are, why we are, and how we spread the love and grace of Jesus Christ when our default mode doesn't work anymore, when it's not all about us. I've been spending some time these days reading books on the future of the Christian church and how we might find hope for that future. And one book this week I've been reading called The Second Resurrection contained a reminder that churches often forget that Jesus gave a great commandment, but also a great commission. He says churches normally do well with the first. They focus on loving each other and creating a warm family circle. But sometimes they forget the commission. They forget the part about going out into the world to make disciples. He suggests that you can't really just reform a church that may be hanging on by the skin of its teeth. First, a church has to die so that it can be brought back to life in a new way. Well, I'm going with the theory that the institution, as we have come to know it and love it, is as good as dead. Right now, it is lying silent and folded in a tomb of COVID, unable to catch its breath, waiting to be raised from the dead, waiting to be raised to new life with new purpose. So now we have the awesome responsibility, the awesome privilege of redesigning the future of the Church of Jesus Christ, and that work begins now. So over the coming week, I want you to think about not just what do you want St. John's to look like in the future, 
but what do you want it to look like now? Because we are the church. And for once, we are out there in the world, unable to huddle together here in this place as we normally would. The challenge I gave our Wednesday morning chat group this week was to be sure in every interaction they have in the community, when they support a local merchant as they struggle to get back on their feet, let them know that you are doing it because of your faith. Because your church, St. John's, is a church that believes we must be part of our community. Not just because we are nice people, but that we believe Jesus calls us to be out there in the world. Out of the place that makes us feel warm and secure and loved. Out there in a world that may not always accept our message, may not want to hear our message, as our gospel reading reminds us today. Go for it. And all be so anxious to hear your stories of God's interaction in the world through faithful disciples like you and like me. Thanks be to God.
I noticed um, most weeks that a lot of the comments on our Facebook page are about the, the music and the singing, and so I just want to say a thank you to Dave and Daniela. We're so fortunate to have them with us during this time, and um, they will actually be uh, joining us as soloists in the fall as well, so we're very pleased to have their musical talents enhance our worship services. We want, as always, to th say thank you to all of you who have been um, so generous with your ongoing financial support of St. John's during this time when we have no fundraisers to supplement our income, no rentals. So we so appreciate your uh, ongoing donations. Today, as we talk about living out our faith in community, of course, we encourage you again to be supportive of our local businesses as they open up. Please tell them that you are supporting them because your church and your faith encourages you to do that. It's, mm -hmm. uh, it's hard to get used to naming ourselves as people of faith and also naming the church community to which we belong. But that certainly is a strong message in our gospel readings these days. It isn't a time um, during these difficulties to hold on to what we have, but rather to share it generously so that God's vision of enough for all might become a reality. And so we join our voices to bless all of the work of Jesus Christ that we continue to do during these difficult times. As we remember how your early followers considered the needs of the whole community, O oh God, we ask you to fill our lives, our hearts with love, instill within us a desire to live with a heart considerate of others. Alone we can do little, but together our gifts have the power to change the world. Bless all of the gifts we offer and through your grace, transform them and us into agents of your love in the world. Amen. Again, we gather all of our thoughts together in prayer, all of the hopes and dreams and thankfulness of our heart. Let us pray. Ever-present God, the one who never turns away from the needs of your people. The one who so desired to foster a relationship that he came among us in human form. We thank you that you walk with us through all of life's ups and downs, through times of celebration and rejoicing, through times of uncertainty, doubt, and fear. You are our faithful traveling companion along life's pathway. It is so tempting, O oh God, to rest in the security of your love and grace. But we know that it is only as we reach out to others, walking alongside them in faithful companionship, that loving community is built and your land of grace will rest on a secure foundation. 
encourage us, excite us, and equip us to leave security behind and risk faithful discipleship. In Jesus' name we ask it as we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our final hymn today has always been special to me, as the author was a colleague and fellow classmate at Emmanuel College, who unfortunately died at an early age. I love not just in this hymn, but in all of her hymns, her images of what it means to follow faithfully. Hymn number 633, Bless Now, O God, the Journey. God's name. 